Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Dead Cells. Hey SB, I thought I thought the game was over. I thought we won. Yeah, me too. But I have received information. Intelligence has been delivered to me that if we walk about 10 feet to our right here, uh, something is going to occur. The game gives you no indication <laughs> that it's not over. I guess they just rely on you being like, wow, I just ground for however many dozens of hours it took to finally get my stuff together and beat five cells and get into the secret biome and fight the secret boss and win. Let's just play some more dead cells, shall we? <laughs> uh, but yeah, something's going to happen. I don't exactly know what it is, but my impression is it's not just a cinematic that there's... I, I believe there's more gameplay. Somehow, we didn't beat Dead Cells yet. So I guess, let's let's go beat Dead Cells, shall we? Yeah, wow, I was inches from it, huh? <laughs> okay. Alright, let's see what this is. Oh, we're in a spooky time dungeon. This is, this is the penalty I pay for not having gone to the clock tower in a while. The timekeeper's gonna drag me in here and harangue me. This actually is the clock room. Uh, okay, I hope we're not fighting, because I don't have any weapons. You! Are you proud of yourself? The malaise is still flowing through the island. I was thinking, you know, it wasn't like, it wasn't much of an ending ending, but it's a, you know, I don't think it's necessarily a genre that relies on narrative closure, and so I thought they just sort of left it as like, and then he made for himself a hell that he would have to dwell in eternally, and I was like, okay, that's... That's satisfying enough of an ending, but apparently the developers disagree. There's more stuff happening. I'll have to mess with the loop again. This will not end well. Oh yeah, there is all that stuff in the clock tower about about time behaving strangely. No, no, are you serious? Didn't you just... Wait, I thought you kicked me into the... I thought that was your plan. Apparently, clock lady not happy about the thing that just happened there. Okay. Well... Well, that's not what that's supposed to look like. Hey there, you're not dead. Aren't you the headless fellow that's been getting around? Okay. This is, this is the dialogue from the beginning of the game. <laughs> Something ain't right here. I appreciate that our character's on top of it. It's true, I don't have a tongue. <laughs> it must be strange to be back from the dead. Yeah, so this is all exactly the uh, the dialogue from the beginning of the game. We done time-looped. We done been time-looped, except not exactly, because we have all of our stuff and our terrifying number of cells. Well, I don't exactly know what we're here to do. I guess let's, p <laughs> let's pick a tube. Um... Boy, I'm gonna level with you. None of these are really blowing my hair back. Right, we might just take this one, cuz Electro Whip. If I don't know what I'm going up against, Electro Whip is a nice safety weapon. I mean, there's not a lot of, like, identity in this tube, but Whip plus Shield plus Root Grenade is all I need. We'll be okay. And we got a Mushroom Boy to keep us company. So, yeah, I don't exactly... I guess we just play some Dead Cells? Maybe we gotta go to the Clock Tower? I mean, listen, I know what to do in this part of the game. I've been here once or twice in the past. I assume that something is going to occur. I think I want to stick with my whip. I do like the tentacle. Ah, too many enemies. Yeah, this is, this is going to be an annoyance. Okay, I need you guys not to shoot at me at the same time, though. This is a cunning strategy. It has taken taking mooks and kung fu movies dozens of generations to figure out that you don't have to just stand around and attack one by one. These guys put it together in, what, like a few dozen episodes. Oh, Mushroom Boy, making things a little unpredictable. Here's the thing, variety is the spice of Mushroom Boy's life. I do think we have pretty good, uh, pretty good starting equipment here. Please stop doing that. And a couple of things of food right away. I'm not wild about an elite in this situation, but we have no other way to go. Uh, there's like a non-zero chance we are about to lose our combo. All right, I'm going to wait for these two to turn around, and then we're going to jump up there and root grenade and just go for some 
Go for some real fast murders. Uh, don't you dare. Don't you dare zap me with your elite lightning nonsense. So yeah, this might end up being a real long episode if we have to play a whole thing of dead cells here. Uh, yeah, that's on color. What am I doing? Why am I even considering the traits? Also, rat. We definitely cleared this platform already, right? Mm, I guess I didn't run all the way to the corner. It could... You, Here's the thing, I'm just thinking, respawning enemies could totally be part of the deal, right? I do like reveals invisible enemies as a trait. I don't think it's, um, it's not something we get very often because it's starred, right? It's a rare trait. But it does make certain areas of the game far less annoying. You know, like the areas we're always going through at the, at the beginning of the episodes. Uh, you know what, let's go check out what's here, what's up here first. It's been a while since we've done, like, a whole... Wow, Mushroom Boy killing it. You know, he's not... It's not that he's not powerful, it's just that he's unpredictable. <laughs> Makes me real nervous, but it's been a while since we've done a run from, like, the very beginning. I'm a little concerned that we're going to do the whole run and nothing's going to happen, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to figure out what exactly it is that I need to do to move the plot forward. But at some point, something... Something obvious has to occur, right? Like, I guess we probably got to go to the clock tower. I'm not wild about that. I'm not, I do not feel that I am well trained against uh, clock boss. And it's not that big of a deal on the lower difficulties. You take a lot of hits from clock boss, but also she doesn't hit particularly hard with any individual attack. So it's just, you know, you trade blows. Um, but we can't do that with the malaise in the picture. We have to actually, like... I would so much rather fight the giant. I do think it's kind of interesting that, like... I'm not trying to say that the Collector was an easy boss or anything. But it really didn't take us that many tries. And when I think about how long it took me to learn... Um, to, uh, to be successful against Hand of the King. I just... I think it's interesting that as the game, as the design of the game has gone on, the areas have gotten, the, like, the biomes have gotten so much more difficult, but I think boss design has generally gotten easier, right? Like, the giant and the and the collector, I think, are both quite a bit easier than most of the bosses who were designed before them, and even Mama Tick's really not that big of a deal. We don't do, we don't do the, um, the morass because of the morass, not because of Mama Tick. The, the level is far more dangerous than the boss. Um, you know, I might... I might dump Mushroom Boy for a turret. Yeah, sorry, Mushroom Boy. Not that I don't love you, but you're off-color, and you make it hard to predict what is going to happen. I'm good at... I'm good at the game when I can predict what's gonna happen. We've, we have learned all the things. The number one thing that's gonna that's gonna catch us out at this point in the uh, at this point in the series is a weird thing occurring. Well, you can really feel the loss of the two points of green. It's enough to make a man powerfully uh, impatient. I very I did very nearly say incompetent there, and I mean, it's true, but you shouldn't say it. It's not ow. I took my eye off the took my eye off the green zombie. Not a smart thing to do. One malaise is not the end of the world, and we are certainly well past our combo threshold. Uh oh. Hmm. We might go ahead and just replace that turret I just bought. I mean, obviously the barnacle does much better damage and it has a much wider firing range, like sort of an arc. But Sinew Slicer does real good DPS. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna stick with it. Let's just toss this. I could have taken the bow, but um, as you can probably tell, I've gotten very reliant on having a shield. I really prefer that shield life. Which is not to say that I wouldn't, um, <clears throat> not to say that I would never use a bow, use a bow over a shield, but I don't think that's going to be the bow, probably. It would have to be a little bit more compelling than that. Alright, 
right, so once we once we get up here, we'll teleport back, grab that carrot, and then sell the uh, sell the radish. I told you, man. I told you it was important to eat your vegetables. But only some of your vegetables. Other ones you should sell. You know, you gotta you gotta maintain an economy. What's gonna be the best way? It's probably just best to run. This part of the run is actually really valuable, I've learned. Because um, I don't... I just don't see runes on the floor all the time, the, the first time through. It's good to have an excuse to go back through the level. Alright, let's keep on moving. So wait, hold on. Let me think about this a little bit. If we're trying to go Clock Tower... Well, we can access the Sepulcher from... From the slumbering sanctuary, we don't actually have to change our route very much. I, we're just going to use the the route that we've been using. This is the way. This is the way that I know to go. And then we can go to. Can we, we can't. We can't go to the. Okay, okay. Things are still weird. Good. That's good. Um. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay, let's let's change let's change things up a little bit here. Fire might be a good plan. Uh, I do like the firebrands. Do we want to replace the electric whip? It's definitely like a comfort weapon for me. But there's a lot of value in the firebrands. Uh, I don't really like the off-color shield. I, I sort of wish that that's the thing that we were getting to replace. Alright, at the risk of this maybe being a real dumb thing to do, given that we have no idea what's going on in the world around us, let's use a weapon that I like a lot, but that I'm a little rusty with. Oh man, you know what I should have done? I should have tried turning down the cell difficulty to see if um, to see if it changes things. Because if, the, if we're still in the weird glitchy state on a lower difficulty, I'm curious how we would interact with the Collector. Oh wait, and we have a blueprint. We have a new blueprint. Oh, maybe I wanna... You know what? For right now, let's just keep going. I should maybe have turned down the difficulty so as we could earn that blueprint. We could buy off that blueprint, right? Well, whatever. Well, if we get through this run, or we die, and it turns out that nothing seems to have changed, we'll go back and try some stuff. So yeah, firebrands. It's a ranged weapon. It's a it's an infinite ammo ranged weapon. It does very little damage on impact, but it starts lots of fires. Basically, the deal is when you throw the firebrands, you create a ground fire, and that'll apply one stack of the burning status to enemies. And if you hit them with the actual projectile, it puts up another stack. That seems seems to be how it works. So you can get a lot of fire on somebody pretty damn quickly, although maybe not quite as quickly as we were stacking it up at the end of last episode. I think the bosses uh, last episode had more debuffs on them than I've ever seen. We were really applying stuff quickly and efficiently. Oh good, cells! I'm so happy to see them. Obviously that was sarcasm. These cells are dead to me. Take that, boss guy. I don't know what his... Oh, there it is. I was going to say, I don't know what his elite gimmick is, because he hasn't moved even a tiny little bit. Let's make sure this is active before we move on, because sometimes it's a little bit of a pain to teleport around this place. All of the dead ends have teleporters in them, but you often have nowhere to escape to. Also, the Firebrands are a pretty reasonable anti-bat weapon in most circumstances. The fact that these, um, the fact that these things cause biters to drop is really a double-edged sword. You can sometimes create some real erratic behavior from your enemies with biters. I mean, we must. We must take this. I love a Tesla coil. Uh, it is probably a better turret than the Barnacle, so the question is, are we double turret? Or is it replacing the barnacle? And I think I, I think I like having a root grenade an awful lot. I know I'm not using it that much, but like a little bit of crowd control. Here's the thing. I panic. I panic hard. <laughs> and 
when I panic, I think it's a good idea for me to have a button I can press to just, like, calm the situation down. Um, hmm. Yeah, a 7S weapon uh, might be a good idea. Let's not take it for the moment. I mean, we have a 7S weapon. What am I talking about? But we might, we might buy something else. We might buy something that's a little bit more immediately hard-hitting. The downside, of course, of the Firebrands um, is that, despite the relative safety with which you can engage, um, it takes a while. It takes a while for most things to die. And there's a lot of safety in immediate murder. Also downside, there is water in this level, and enemies standing in water are immune to fire. And since the projectile does functionally no damage at all, uh, obviously that could be a problem. And we do not have the oil necessary to start an oil slick on top of the water to maintain fire in that situation. I'm doing my best to pay attention to the floor while also talking, and you know, there's just like a lot of things going on in a run of Dead Cells. It can be a little overwhelming to keep track of it all. So I appreciate the game periodically reminding us that, yes, stuff is in fact happening. But I'll be honest, I would love it if the weird effects, like, if whatever is happening would happen a little bit faster, is all I'm saying. Yeah, this this may well actually be the best turret. Hey, you. There we go. Come down here and get electrofried. I think we can probably get that guy and also drag him down to the turret. Or I suppose just set him on fire and let him burn to death. Also works. So I'll tell you right now, just <laughs> just so everybody's prepared for it. If I should die here during the run, probably what I will do is stop recording and then just do the thing we have been doing where I get I get midway into a run and then and then start the recording up again. Uh, except this time we'll be probably in a slightly different place. I'll have to I'll take some time off uh, off camera to recalculate the route if it turns out that we there's a good reason to take a break here. Otherwise, I guess we're just playing some Dead Cells. Here's the thing about Dead Cells. Um, it's actually pretty fun. Oh, right. It doesn't start a fire unless you're within a certain distance of the enemy. You know what? I don't need to... I don't need to put myself in harm's way. I have all this Tesla coil. All of this devastating energy exploding off my Tesla coil. I'm actually playing, like, I, this has been a real stressful period for me for reasons that are not really related to video games. I just, you know, I have uh, a generalized anxiety disorder on top of my depression and my, you know, whatever. And so sometimes I'm basically, like, always dealing with some kind of my brain is trying to kill me type garbage. Uh, but sometimes things all kick into high gear at the same time. And my particular cocktail of problems it's uh it's very self-reinforcing they feed each other uh so it can be it can be a little difficult and it's been a pretty difficult period for me in that sense however man i'm playing some fun video games here on the channel this has been like a really good time i'm not playing any like strategy stuff and there's not a ton of narrative going on and i do miss all of that but also like Sitting down and recording Dead Cells and Hades and Spelunky 2 is just like... Mechanically, this is one of my favorite periods of the channel. Uh, this is really... it's it's been good here, lately. Elsewhere, less so, but here, real good. And you might... you might say, but SB, it sounds like you're so miserable some of the time. Oh, god. I didn't... I didn't think that, I thought we would just walking would be good enough to get out of the thing, and I didn't. I couldn't actually tell where the garbage on the ground ended, and where it was, um, where there was stuff on the ground. Just because, like, when we kill people, it produces garbage all over the ground, right? And it does hide the the mushroom spike effect a little bit. Well, that was pretty late in the combo to lose. Uh, to lose the combo, that might be real bad. In terms of our long-term development. 
Also, this weapon does have the classic damage over time weapon problem where it's very difficult to regain health with it. I did not mean to aggro the zombie. Okay. Anyway, as I was saying before things went all pear-shaped there, uh, I, I've had messages from people who are like, Hey man, it sounds like you're miserable playing these video games. Are you having fun? And I am. It's I know that it, it can sound like a thing, uh, <laughs> on account of me being, like, fundamentally a pretty negative person. I think. I try really hard not to be, but I have to try really hard not to be, so that's sort of what I mean. Um, you know what? Let's let's switch it up here. We have a free test of the Sonic Carbine available, and it seems like a pretty good one because it also shoots fire. I've not used this weapon at all. Let's play with it. Uh, so my point is, even when I'm getting frustrated with myself, even when I'm getting frustrated with the game, I know that I tend to vocalize in a way that makes it sound like the frustration is the experience I'm having, but it's not. It's just an element of the experience that I'm having, and I... I want to be better, in general, about vocalizing the whole experience, which is why you sometimes hear me being very intentionally positive, maybe like to a degree that it seems like I'm being a little silly about it, because if I don't do that, then all that comes out is the negativity. Alright, so fires through enemies, keep shooting when held down, inflict critical hits to targets behind the first enemy, and then it doesn't actually show you the crit damage because of the weird modifier, but I'm sure, I'm sure it's more. That seems pretty cool. Uh, it's possible that maybe it was a maybe I shouldn't have gotten rid of the sh uh, the um, the firebrands. Maybe I should have dropped the shield because you know ranged weapon plus shield can can sometimes have some problems if you run into a situation that you don't have enough ammo to handle. Although it doesn't, I guess the ammo must get stuck in the enemies, but it sure doesn't. It's hard to imagine because it doesn't look like arrows, you know. Alright, well, it does hit low enough to, to actually hit Mushroom Boys when they're just walking around. We have definitely had that problem with some weapons. Uh, I have found that it's very difficult to start runs with the Rapier, despite the fact that the Rapier is one of my favorite melee weapons, and it's in two different colors, because you can't hit Mushroom Boys with most of the, most of the standing combo goes over their heads. So I've just completely stopped taking it <laughs> from the tubes at the beginning. It's a shame, it's a cool weapon, but... Um, is this better? No, our current one starts oil fires. I mean, obviously I would prefer one that is purple. So it's sort of a strange ranged weapon in that it fires very quickly, um, but has pretty short range and also actually limited ammo. A lot of the short... a lot of the... Ranged weapons that are intended to be sort of used as melee weapons have infinite ammo. Although also you get... I guess there's not really a consistent... What I was going to say is that it sort of violates what I see as fairly consistent design precepts, but I suppose they're only there if you ignore a bunch of the items that do exist, because, like, obviously the alchemical pistol is a thing. That is, in, that is clearly intended for use as a very long-range weapon, and it has infinite ammo. I guess maybe maybe the way that it gets to violate the precept is by being a weapon that it, it's not a primary damage weapon; it's a, a a status weapon. And clearly, there are some different. Out! Oh, wow, wow! I did not roll fast enough. That was not good. Okay, we have some food. Where's the nearest man? It's a it's a real pain in the ass to teleport around here. We do have food sitting around somewhere, don't we? Yeah, it's just a carrot, but it'll have to do. I do wish that the teleporters were slightly more frequent. We'll, we'll check out that door in a second. Let's go get this so that we're not likely to get exploded by the next time we get punched. You know, it's still, it's still a pretty low number. Okay, well we're certainly not getting any combo doors now. 
All right, I think the combo door coming out of here still just gives level 7 gear, so it's not like a huge problem if you miss this as long as you have something that's reasonably competitive. You see our constantly evolving understanding of what's good in the game. Oh, man. I really like having a turret. I'm not even using my root grenade. Alright, I'm going to sacrifice my control for oil to go along with my fire. It is not impossible that we will that we will take that. Right, unfortunately, we killed the guy in front too quickly to really get a sense of... Oh, nice. I was expecting to have to parry there. Uh, to really get a sense of how powerful the crits are. This weapon seems alright. Seems to have pretty good breach value. We are definitely stunning enemies out of their attacks frequently. Yeah, there's a good reason that the in addition to normal effects also apply a damage over time thing is a high rarity affix because it's very powerful. I do think that it is, it is probably the case that a weapon's like, oh, and also I start fires uh, at tier 5 is better than a tier 7 weapon that is just doing its nor normal damage. Alright, we should definitely go down there and get that, and it would be super cool if we could find, like, a challenge room or something. That would be neat. It just feels like, it feels like an extra scroll is a pretty big deal, and I know that seems like a strange thing to say right after the run where I was just like, ah, who needs two scrolls, let's just go fight the final boss. Um, but it feels like a scroll is such a big deal that I'm really, like, I start to get nervous if we don't find any extras in the first couple of areas. I do think Lacerating Aura is good, but I like our current equipment. I definitely prioritize Lacerating Aura more highly if we have a melee weapon. So do we want that carrot? I only have one malaise right now. I, I don't think so. Let's, let's go back and sell it. Malaise is a much larger stumbling stumbling block early on. I have definitely gained a respect for managing our actual HP as well, but this early on, malaise is the thing that forces you to flash, generally. I really like the fact that that sort of shifts over the course of the, uh, the run, though. Okay, so this is going to be scary. Never mind, it turns out it's fine, we're very powerful. And then I guess there's nothing for it but to leave. We could reroll a weapon shop until we get a better shield. We're about to pull a curse chest, um, and I think there's, there's a chance that we'll just get something out of there that we want to put in that secondary slot anyway. We're just gonna continue on. Let the game keep glitching at us until it until it tells us something new. So, do we want... What would make sense? What would be good? I mean, disen I, hate, I hate to just take the same things over and over again, but man, disengagement's really useful and powerful. The control it gives us over our situation when we are low on health, I think, is pretty much unparalleled. I would definitely take disengagement first if you didn't have to take the heart first in order to take the heart. Ooh, broadsword. No thank you. I do not want to be cursed while wielding a broadsword. Uh, I'm going to leave that here for now. Damn it. Turret, do stuff. Okay, turret didn't feel that it needed to, uh, to participate in that one. Man, oil grenades spread oil over such a huge area. Alright, where is that dude? We're gonna do we're gonna do the thing here. 
Yeah, crits. I don't know. Honestly, the crits don't really seem that powerful. I don't, I, I don't think the crits are very good here. It's fine. The weapon, uh, the weapon seems to be fine on the whole. You know, we don't need to stress about the crits too much. I was gonna say, if it wasn't good, it would definitely be weird. Just let him do that. Okay. Yeah, if it wasn't good, it would definitely be weird, given how powerful the other blueprints that you can only get from that biome are. Yeah, wow, look at how good the breaching is. He can't even execute his teleport. Oh, hey, you are absolutely welcome. Welcome to my mouth. I do wish that we had gotten the um, the other guy critted. Yeah, I think I need to start stressing out a little bit less. It turns out this gun has the situation in hand. Things are under control. Ooh, this is scary, though. I mean, I guess it's less scary because we have um, electricity. So we will just wait until they're both facing away and then do the thing. Problem solved. Why would you jump back into the electrified water? You made it out. Just go, man. Go, go, el go elsewhere. Live your life. There we go. Need to do that a little earlier on. I do appreciate when they fly low enough to catch on fire. Alright, hold on a second. Oh, also I appreciate when they feed us a crit or two. I suppose that's a thing I wasn't really thinking about, but that's a situation where that could be happening a lot, right? Alright, even more of this. So, it looks like these actually both go forward. I assumed one of them was going to turn out to be a dead end, but they, they appear to unite on the other side. Yeah, I just, I have... I have a lot of reactions baked in based on the idea that the enemies generally will hit you if they start trying to hit you, but clearly this weapon makes that not exactly a reality. You're just running over all of the terrain here real fast to look for opportunity. Given how powerful... Um, just shove him off the cliff. How powerful stat points are, it is a little wild to me how much variance there seems to be in the, the number of scrolls you get per run, because it makes a huge difference. Yeah, just put your put your faith in the gun. And obviously these guys are more difficult to breach. You really wanna be Oh! Ammo. Ammo problem. Fortunately, an electric turret, real good at dealing with this particular enemy. It, it even has a pretty short cooldown for a turret. Oh, look at that. That was beautiful. Absolutely optimum, uh, optimum application of our weapon there. I am not hitting him. There we go. <laughs> Or I guess I, I was hitting him, probably, but I wasn't starting a fire, so I thought I wasn't hitting him. But that's right, the trail... The, the shots don't actually ignite people. They leave a trail of flames on the ground. Ooh. I'm gonna... This is... This is an oil grenade. Except, also, it stuns enemies for two and a half seconds. It might be the perfect weapon. Yeah, this thing where it, um, it leaves a... Trail of Flames actually only works on enemies that are on the same surface that you're on. And there's our rune. Do we want to just do it now? I mean, there's no combo doors here, so it's not like we're getting anything out of waiting. Let's blow this guy up real fast. Yep, yeah, and that's why it won't ignite stuff in water either, because the, the Trail of Flames is trying to lay in the water. All right, well, I'm pretty happy to see this. Can I please? There we go. Even one extra scroll feels so good. I feel I feel so much safer now. 
And by safer, I mean murderier. Went a little, little, little off optimal time there, I think. Very nervous I was going to accidentally climb up. Oh, apparently you do not accidentally climb up this, uh, this little gap here. Okay, looks like that platform should be safe. You could just memorize all of these, and given the number of challenge rooms I've seen, I probably should have the pieces memorized, but I sure don't. In my defense, there's a fair number of them that look kind of similar. Ah, okay. <laughs> Almost took a saw blade into my face. And hey, the no-hitter. I feel pretty good about that. Oh, hey, on color shield. Cool. I think we're going to be pulling this uh, elite up here. Yeah, it's going to be a minute before we can get this shield. I'm going to wait until my stun is off cooldown. Okay. We're going to tap him, then jump back up, bring him up here, stun him. Ah, murder! Who needs strategy when you have murder? We're going to be doing a lot of waiting on this grenade. Which is my favorite Samuel Beckett play. It's from his it's from his later period. Oh, I was trying to drop through the through the thing, boy. I really it kept me in place for a lot longer than I was expecting. All right, let's go get ourselves an uncolor. I really thought he was gonna die. You know, the um the shielding effect from these things. I always forget how potent it is. Okay, so this is the one that gives you a force field when you parry successfully, which is whatever. I just want something where the parry damage is scaling. Also, obviously, a frontline shield is pretty non-ideal when you do not even have a melee weapon. Yeah, I'm pretty much overjoyed to have found a stun oil grenade. <laughs> Come into my parlor. Come into my parlor, you big idiot, said the spider to the fly. You big stupid fly. Okay, hold on. We're gonna let them do this. It's not exactly how I wanted that to go. Hmm. <laughs> okay. There we go. Trying to make sure we're getting the crits on the big one. And that is exceedingly welcome. Feels like a lot of elites, huh? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna use the techniques that we have been training in. Bring this guy up to the turret. I may have started climbing a little bit too early there. That was probably a little unsafe. I was hoping I could be on the other platform and still be shooting him. There we go. We did, in fact, run out of ammo. This is this is this build is not going to remain viable for too much longer. We're going to start running into serious problems as our enemies continue to scale up in health. Uh, and obviously, every scroll helps, but we're gonna, we're just going to need a higher tier weapon pretty soon as well. All right, crits not ideal, but if we're willing to just press all of the buttons, it matters less. Okay, well that went pretty well. That was only 75%. Did we miss? No, we did not miss anything. It feels like it was just a real short prison depth. Okay, uh, hmm. Well, I don't think we're going to take Firebrand 6. We basically have Firebrands, but also this other thing. Uh, I guess let's go back and burn those carrots if I'm not going to eat them, and I think I'm not. Let's go make ourselves some cash. You know, it's going to be like 400 gold in total. Who doesn't love 400 gold? I don't know what the um, what the conversion is between dead Celsian gold coins and the U.S. dollar, but I'll, I'd, I'd take 400 anything at this point. I don't know if you guys have heard the economy is in a precarious place. I could just I could use a 400 or two. 
Okay, let's, like I said, just continue on our path for the moment. I'm pretty sure... I'm trying to remember. Can we get from the Slumbering Sanctuary to where we need to go, or do we need to veer off to the Stilt Village? Because we can certainly go Stilt Village Clock Tower. Hmm. I don't remember, and you know, maybe it's best we do the Stilt Village anyway. Because the Slumbering Sanctuary is definitely difficult, and we were doing that because of the fact that we needed to make it to the cavern, right? So... Yeah, maybe maybe we'll follow this path through Black Bridge from there to the Stilt Village, and then two points beyond. Uh, we could just take ammo here. That could that would alleviate our concerns for the moment. Obviously, like support and tranquility are both very good. I think I'm gonna take ammo. There's a decent chance we will not need it. But that's fine. I'd rather rather have it and not need it than run out of ammo being chased by two slashers, you know. Although, realistically, it may not be an issue because of the uh, incredible power of our turret. Oh, the little the little slimes are actually a huge um, a huge liability here for their producer. Well, it sure doesn't look like it's producing a force field for two seconds, does it? Maybe it only produces the force field on melee parries? Even if you only use the shield for the thing that I'm using it for right there, I still kind of think it's worth having a shield, because that is a real... Like, on runs where I don't have a shield, I definitely feel the difficulty of... Um, the difficulty of dealing with those guys sometimes, if they're like through a wall or something, you can get into a position where they are just making your life a living hell as you're trying to climb around and deal with other enemies. Uh, so to be clear, because I know I haven't done this on camera in a while, um, I know there are enemies over here, we're leaving them alive on purpose. Somewhere around here there's a cursed chest and we want to make sure that we have at least 10 enemies around to kill after we pull it. Didn't really think that through. Wasn't looking ahead. Didn't have a plan. Uh, okay. Not yet. Not yet. Um, can we get this guy now? I'd love to just kill him now. Okay, he's not gonna fire at us. I had a death in an episode of Spelunky recently, uh, where I died because I was not perfectly centered in an elevator, and it crushed me against the roof of the, uh the place it was going up to. That's got me real nervous about my footing on elevators in this game as well. Ow! That's a bad thing to get caught off guard by. I just, I totally did not even see the projectile until it hit us. Obviously we'll be going back for that carrot as soon as we flatten this nerd. Uh, how far back? Yeah. Walking far back. Hey, the whole level just shook. That's weird. It was probably just the explosion of one of those, uh, one of those vile enemies, one of those slime producers off screen, but it's a lot of shaking. We're probably leaving the room through this corner, that's my guess. But maybe I am wrong. Okay, we'll leave that guy, that's another... Another curse removal, dude. Obviously, that's not exactly the enemy you want to be fighting when you're cursed, but... You don't always get to choose. I also don't like fighting these guys when cursed. However, we have a plan. And that plan is, stand at a safe distance and do this, because there's no way they can stop you. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't do that while cursed. Um, if you could, it would be the only way that you would ever engage with anything, so I get why they, why they have disabled that. Uh, but that does, I think, make it pretty important to deal with those guys while you are cursed. Just get them out of the way. 
Oil fires. Uh, boy. That's a fun weapon if you're any color that isn't the colors that we are. Again, <laughs> any color that isn't the colors we are. So I'm keeping an eye on the map, trying to see if we uh, if we happen to brush past an area that is gold in color. This will be the food shop. Is it? Yes, it is directly into the shop. Okay, good to know. We're honestly, um, I feel like pretty poor, right? We usually have more money than this. I guess I bought stuff. Alright, a whole lot of you need to just calm the hell down. I just think if the enemies are allowed to fight me through the walls, I should also be allowed to fight them through the walls, and that's why I like to have a shield. If you don't have a shield, then <laughs> the ranged enemies have a huge, weird physics advantage on you. The lip, like the laws of the physical laws of the world, are working out of your favor. Don't let this happen to you. Remember to equip the shield. Uh, dead end. You always want to be making progress toward the cursed chest at the beginning. Every time I every time I hit a dead end, I clear out a whole bunch of enemies in a dead end without having found the thing. It feels bad. I'm trying to balance how much I'm looking at the map to see if we hit a hint of gold versus how much I'm looking at the floor below us to not miss uh, runes. Screw these guys. You really do have to... If you want to be consistently successful on five cells, you, really, you, you do have to kind of pull all the stops out. It really, it was kind of life-changing for us to accidentally discover that, <laughs> that that ability exists. It was a big deal, man. It had, a, it had a huge effect on our success. Again, physical rules of the universe turn out to have a tremendous effect on how exactly you can or cannot win. I don't love this at all. Where are they? Okay, we're just gonna... There we go. Problem solved. So do we have any indication? Still no. That's a power scroll. Which we probably ought to go back and get, I suppose, but I'm not in a huge hurry. Yep, still just eights. I think it's going to be hard to replace... Uh, stun oil grenade plus Tesla coil feels like a very powerful pair of items. I'll think about it. I'm surprised to see those guys aren't fireproof. Because they are poison proof, and also they're big stone obelisks. Boy, I, I jumped down there and hit the, um, hit the stun grenade button, and it just didn't, when it just didn't happen, I was, uh, surprised. <laughs> Still never sure when it's gonna decide that I just don't get my skills. It is a surprise every single time. Boy, they're gonna make us go all the way to the end. Who, who built this? Give me a diamond pickaxe. I will fix this problem in like three minutes. It's probably intentional, right? It's like a uh, it's like an elbow in a uh, in a toilet drain pipe. Wait, is this the one where there's just spikes? It is. Good thing to have a detachable head. I'd recommend it to anybody, really. I 
I did not even see that that guy was there. I avoided that attack through sheer dumb luck. You know, there's nothing, <laughs> nothing wrong with a little bit of dumb luck. Uh, that's going to complicate things. Here, teleport down here. I was really hoping we would get that projectile across before he showed up. Yep, still absolutely no indication. We do know that we are as far left as we can go, though. The map literally will not scroll any further over. I just want to get the curse over with, man. Well, there's definitely an exit out the top of this room, so I guess let's check that out. Okay, that's the bridge. We have no concept of where the room might be. I'm going to guess that it's not going to be all the way over here in this corner. At some point, our explorer's room is going to trigger. At some point, we will know something. So my official, uh, my official review of this particular Dead Cells weapon is... It's alright, it's pretty good. So there's an area below us. How would that area be accessed? Probably this way. Well, I guess that's where we're going next. We're just trying to fill in as much map as possible, as quickly as possible, until the explorer's rune kicks in and shows me where the damn chest is. You know, when we first got the explorer's rune, I was like, oh, that's a neat convenience thing. It turns out to be... Uh, totally life-saving. Really tremendously important. I do want to get rid of the elite. We, we're certainly not saving elites, although at this point, probably it's best we don't do that because let's try to maintain our combo. I believe it is the case. Oh boy, are there enough enemies left? One, two, three, four, five. Remember, anytime we see four enemies grouped up, it's probably actually one enemy because the it's probably a vial of slimes. Yes, there are enough enemies left. Okay, so this way we expect no resistance here. Uh, what was I? I was about to say something. I don't remember what. It could not possibly have been important. Who has ever said a thing of value while playing a video game? I'm not convinced it happens. Alright. <laughs> so either we get our combo door or we die. Ooh. That's a pretty good kind of shield. Do I want this? It does have better parry damage. It has the knockback thing, which is sometimes very funny. Um, if you if you parry someone into a shield with a knockback or in, into a wall with a knockback shield, they explode. Like it, it super murders them. Uh, and it has poison on parry. I think we're gonna take this actually. It's not even actually off color. These are always purple. And then this lore room shape over here is just the. Um, yeah, it's this thing. And this this is the bag that doesn't have any cool stuff, but it just has the note. Yeah. There is no mechanical value to that note. Why do I even care? Okay, let's let's go get this scroll. We're just gonna be real cautious. This would be a dumb point to lose the run. However, it is eminently possible, and there are some enemies that are like super dangerous in this biome. These guys, for example, take those dudes very seriously. Oops, that's not it. I meant to turn around and throw that, as you might imagine. Little slime dudes, also high danger. They can execute an attack really quickly, and for some reason, they hit incredibly hard. I know it's not super relevant, because right now everything hits incredibly hard, but... It's a more, <laughs> more of a general complaint. Boy, those guys hit hard. Alright, let's go clean up these two enemies that we left behind over here. And then apparently, there's a gap in the ceiling that is going to feed us two more. Okay, this looks like it probably won't be too bad. I wonder if I can make that. Aha! Again, taking things very seriously. So how do we get... Oh, the get the climbable in the ceiling is over here. Okay. 
That'll get us most of the way there, although obviously I'm a little nervous about climbing blind up to enemies in our current state. Okay, these guys are not that dangerous. I was going to say, if we get in close quarters with one of those obelisk electro enemy uh, guys, it could be actually very, very concerning for us. Oh, right, you're not allowed to... All right. We'll come back and get this amethyst later, maybe, or not. Also, that might happen. I don't really, I don't know that I care enough. Uh, we may as well do this right now. Are there guys in here? Perhaps a single green bat? Ah, no such luck. The lightning bolt's definitely interesting. Uh, I think we're not going to take... I'm not wild about the lightning bolt. It's fine. It's fine. It is ammo-less, which is nice. Or rather, it has infinite ammo, which is sort of feels like the opposite. In some ways. Feels like the opposite. In some ways, feels very much the same. Hmm. We're about to do bridge boss, so I don't know that this arrow thing is going to turn out to be the best play against him. I mean, we have the oil grenade. We're going to... We're gonna have a lot of oil fires going. It's it's probably fine. I'm not I'm not gonna stress too much about it. Uh, so let's go take out this guy. This is just a lone slasher in a corner, right? Shouldn't be a problem if we deploy the grenade plus turret. Probably best he is approached from the level he is on. Okay, curse lifted, combo achieved. So. What else? Uh, we have a handful of enemies in this room, a handful of enemies in this room, and then we also have our food shopping to do. Okay. Going pretty, uh, pretty well on the whole. I would love more free scrolls, but, you know, you, you sort of have to count any free scroll, any, any scroll above the baseline as a valuable thing. But, you know, on a lot of runs lately, we've been getting two, so it sort of makes me feel like... <laughs> so now that's the new baseline. The game treated me nicely once, and now I'll never forget it. Expect it all the time. For real, though, mathematically, if I'm gonna do a good job against the Timekeeper, it would be really nice to have more scrolls. Wow, the stun area on that was huge. I was really not expecting that guy to get caught in it. That would have been a really good time for a parry, actually. We we may well have bounced him all the way to the opposite corner. I'm just going to go ahead and sell this. It is possible that we, it'll end up being correct to use it. To, like, take that. Like, if, if we get hit a couple of times, take that and then use the cough syrup or something like that. But um, I'm lazy and I don't want to come back for it. That's one of the reasons it pays to be thorough, uh, obviously, is that enemies can drop food or money, but another is that it means that we're actually walking on more surfaces in the level and thus more likely to see a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a challenge rune? Let's just deal with this before we take on the elite there. Why play the game fairly, right? What's, what's my incentive? Oh dear. Uh, I really appreciate all the little enemies teleporting up between me and that guy. What are you doing? To be clear, because I don't usually let them do that. If you're not familiar, that attack is they leap in front of you with their back turned so that you will, if you are unattentive, you will strike them in their shielded spiked backside with your melee weapon. Doesn't make a lot of sense um, in the situation that we just saw him do it in. Let's go kill that elite, because the the money from the necklace is probably worth it. Then I suppose also we could do this. I think no, even though this is higher level than our Tesla coil. The Tesla coil is just very good. Also, I suppose, you know, it's, like, theoretically possible that one of them could uh, could drop a necklace that we actually want. Okay, I think it is food shop time. 
I think our play here is just by the um, by the radish and accept that we are only at ninety three percent health. I'm not going to pay twenty thousand gold to fix that tiny tiny problem. Oh wait, I went to a door that had a chest depicted on it. Hard to it's hard to be surprised by what's in the doors. This game gives you some very clear iconography. And yet, and yet here we are. Oh, hey now. What luck. Okay, well we should do this first. No, we shouldn't. I should go ahead and buy the, in case I do a really bad job in here and get injured. But the good news is you cannot take malaise damage from spikes. Somehow the, this, you know, it's, here's the, it's, it's aerosol transmission. So, you know. Okay, well, two extra scrolls before Bridge Boss. This has traditionally been a pretty good sign. Puts us in a real good place damage-wise. Okay. So, the good news is we have Explorer's Rune. I mean, it looks like down is the way to go on this one. And, once again, the value of... That was clumsy. Uh, the incredible value of going over all of the terrain twice. Yeah, I didn't really... What? Grab the thing, asshole. All right, well, everything's falling apart. The good news is, quote unquote good news, uh, if I want to, we can still buy that scroll, or scroll, that uh, flask charge. I think, I think I'm going to. Yep, I think we're going to. <laughs> it's not ideal, but that was a huge amount of damage. And we should not, we should not go forward in this state. I'm really glad that I bought the radish. It's the most expensive radish I've ever eaten. It's okay. 20,000 gold for a scroll is a price that I would pay every single time. So if you want to think about it that way. Uh, obviously, perform better is also, <laughs> also a fine strategy. Alright, let's go... Do this, and then Stilt Village from here. I am not excited about that prospect. Very nervous about the Timekeeper. No, no, and maybe. Probably no, actually. Yeah, I think that's a no. Uh... You know what? I just realized that our stun grenade has... Air I, I, I realized that I hadn't even looked... I stopped, I saw the word oil and I stopped reading. So we don't actually need to have the arrows thing, probably. So I guess it probably is just one of the damage mutations. Um, and it's going to be like, it's probably tranquility, honestly. It's pretty easy to determine your own distance from the boss, except when the boss is leaping and you're not shooting during that period anyway, so... Okay, let's get the no hit, because I love to not get hit. I also love free legendary items, but mostly I love to not get hit. Very normal stuff. Just a lot of very normal stuff occurring right now. Well, that's not... Boy. Good start. At least, at least I can replenish my health with this. And the, of course, the instant I put down the trap, he re, uh, re-shields. Bring my ammo back, and also enjoy all these oil fires. So it does seem like... Oh, this, this sucks. Thank you, thank you for stopping. That's not the direction that you want to roll in when he does that. Now we get him. There we go. He's spending a lot of time um, invincible and damage shielded, and I would love it if that would stop being the case. Damn it. It's always something with this guy. 
I get the no-hit on this very simple boss depressingly infrequently. Alright, well it has been a minute since we have done Still Village. I'm a little nervous about it just for that reason. I'm trying to sell the item. Do we want a magnetic grenade? I don't think so. I think I like... I think I really like our equipment. Slumber, the Slumbering Sanctuary might connect through to... I think it does. It does connect through to um, the Clock Tower, but I think even so, we want to do Still Village, right? Still Village is probably easier. I'm a little more unfamiliar with it, but the Slumbering Sanctuary can be a real nightmare. Yeah, let's just do this. Do we want to buy anything? We don't really want to upgrade any of our stuff. No, I think we're cool. Um, the Stilt Village might even have a food shop. I don't actually know. It's been such a long time since we've been here. That would be pretty cool. Actually, no. You know what? I think I did look for food shops when I looked at the map on the wiki, and I think I found that the... The graveyard was the only post-first boss biome to have one? Maybe. Now I'm not sure of that. I definitely have a memory of thinking I should figure out this information. I do not have a memory of whether I actually did. Oh, that's bad. Oh, right, you can't jump over those guys because they're considerably taller than their graphics. I remember that now. It's been a little while since we've had to fight Crabman. I do wish that they would just... What if the graphics weren't a lie? What if they just made him as tall as he is? Wouldn't that be neat? Who thought I was going to get hit? Was it everyone? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you in on a little secret. I was pretty sure I was getting hit there. Okay. You can use range attacks to just keep the crab in place. Seems like a fine way of dealing with it. Interesting. It can block while stunned. Either that or it can block the stun grenade. I wouldn't expect that to work, but I guess maybe that's what happened. It turned around close enough to when the grenade landed that I thought it hadn't turned around. Could be. I mean, look, I'm perfectly fine with throw out the turret and then just use... Use shooting him to keep him in place. Oh. Fighters creating a situation that has some danger. But yeah, it turns out the Tesla coil is just like one of the best... One of the best items in recent memory. Okay. I can see we're gonna have a... We're gonna have a whole situation here. We may as well do this. Alright. You fools. You absolute dunderheads. <laughs> okay. I was gonna say, is he really gonna survive that? But no, it was just that far down. I'm a little nervous about engaging these guys at the same time, because what if they... What if they do their attacks slightly offset from one another? Yeah, there are definitely some ways in which the enemies teleporting to you thing is actually a blessing. Like I said, I played I played on three cells a little bit not that long ago to unlock stuff, and it's it's remarkable how much my playstyle has been bent around the expectation that enemies will follow me into traps. There sure are some enemies in this level.
I would say that by volume, these enemies are extant. They might not be the most threatening enemies in the universe. Especially, you know, strategically speaking. He does actually turn around literally instantly. Um, but it's not a big deal. He does he does block the uh, block the stun, and I do hate it. But <laughs> but it's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, down. Unfortunately, with these guys, you cannot just stand back. You have to actually take that relatively seriously. I can't block everything. Nothing stops a door. For some reason. <laughs> For some reason, breaking a door is the ultimate offensive maneuver. Nobody can stop it. No one is prepared for it. There we go. Once again, I got the denial sound and had a brief panic attack. I'm really, really happy that we have the trail of fire thing on our shots. It seems super powerful. Oh, maybe I misunderstood that map that I uh, that I saw. Well, I'm gonna just take you right now. That's very interesting indeed. And I mean, I'm sure we're gonna have enough money to buy that flash charge. So yeah, let's. I mean. Pray we don't need it, but. Now remember, we can. There is a, there is a way to um, go over that door and keep your key. But I don't think it actually means anything for us. Statue of the King. Vandalized by his citizens. Uh, they got feelings. They got feelings about the king. You know, on account of all the stuff. Uh, oh, we comboed already. I was going to say, can we go around? But... There's no reason to go around. Why go around when you could simply go through? Come back here. The cowardice. Can you imagine? You just stay over there and slowly burn to death. This is a scary little area. Ow, I don't even know what hit me. Yeah, I have literally no idea what did damage to me there. It was a little explosion, so it was kind of like we got hit by the guy who was up above us, but we definitely didn't on account of, you know, he was up there, up above us. Uh, okay, so nines, I mean, it, it, interesting. Shots leave a trail of flames on the boy's axe is definitely a cool idea. Feels like buying items here is a little bit like buying items in the Slumbering Sanctuary, though, right? It's just, it's just a total waste. Although, it may well be the case. We don't actually know what the item level of the Clock Tower is. It may be the case that the Clock Tower is not as high... Um, does not offer items with a level as high as the Cavern does. Because it sure seems like the Cavern is, is treated by the game as, like, the very final challenge. Oh, maybe it was one of those guys that bit us, and maybe he fell down and I just, like, in all of the violence and the Michigas and everything, I just didn't even notice. Could be, could be. That sounds like me. Oh, crap. Failed to make it through the thing. I was planning to lure those, uh, those bats to the coil. Gross. Gross little things. I saw him. I saw him. Had to adjust my plan a little bit on that one.
For a second there, I thought that bat turned around to try to blow up on the enemy, and I was like, that's not a behavior that they have, right? But I think he was actually just going after the, um... Just going after one of the biters. Again, the biters do introduce a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uncertainty to combat in a way that I don't necessarily care for. So wait, where does this go? Do we have to use the... Do we have to use a key to even see? We do. Okay, but I'm pretty sure the normal door out of here leads to the... It might lead to the sepulcher instead of the clock tower, but that's fine, right? The sepulcher goes to... Boy, I don't remember at all. Um... And Explorer's Instinct just tells me there are doors. Well... Oh, I didn't even get the key. I can't... I, I can't even make this decision. I forgot to go get the key. Uh, I may tab out and <laughs> just check the wiki. I'm not potentially doing the wrong thing in a run just because I haven't been to this biome in a year. Make sure we are regarding those guys with some level of respect. I do feel like if you cause an explosion within damage range of one of their cocoons, it should probably... Should probably have some effect, right? At the very least, it should dislodge them. Alright, we're totally... I'm gonna tab out. <laughs> we're totally gonna just look this up. Uh, dead cells wiki... How do, you, how do you spell cells? Close enough. Google gave me the close enough. Uh, how does one map this thing? Okay. The Stilt Village can take you to the Clock Tower. Or, uh, wait, that doesn't make sense. The Sepulchre, and then either one of them goes to the Clock Room. So I guess actually the question is, which one of those things do we think is more likely to kill us? It's probably the Sepulchre, right? Like, the Clock Tower is the way we want to go. And the Clock Tower, I think, is the normal... We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go to the right here. I'm pretty sure this way to the right leads us to the clock tower, and I think that's the way we want to do this. And if I'm wrong, then we'll just deal with it. So do we want to I'm a little bummed out to see that we didn't get the flask charge, although I guess actually we haven't sold all of the things. And there's no teleporter up here. We should, at the very least, go back and sell the stuff that I apparently just left sitting on the floor for some reason. Was every single necklace that we saw in here red, red, green? I think it may well have been. I think we're gonna what we're gonna do is eat this and then go buy the cough syrup. And then, um, is it this shop or that sh It's this shop, right? Go by the cough syrup and then we go into the clock tower in pretty good health. It's been a long time since we've been in there. And vertical fighting is not necessarily a huge strength of our build. It's fine, we'll figure it out. The Tesla coil will solve all of our problems, as it always has. All hail the glorious Tesla coil. Alright, I'm hoping... Boy, if we go all this way to the Timekeeper and then there's not even... The Timekeeper doesn't even tell us what the hell's going on. It, I'm gonna have... I'm gonna have a frustration. Alright, what item level are we looking at out here? These are tens. That's okay, I suppose. Um, I don't think we're going to take any of this. Like, I know some of our gear's starting to get a little out of date, and I'm worried about the numbers on that. Sorry, I should have. At the very least, we should sell. Um, but I don't think it's right necessarily to do anything else. So let's just hope we'll see some cool stuff in here somewhere. 
I'll be very curious to see what the item level of the shops in the clock tower is. We don't have as much money as I would like, but we could we could buy a thing. Hmm. It worries me that that's an eight. It is also a version of the alchemic carbine that spreads oil on enemies, which is definitely compelling. I mean... Is it actually going to be much better for us damage-wise, though? And we don't really need the oil if we get rid of our sonic uh, carbine, because th that's our fire source anyway. I'm, I'm going to hold on to it for right now. We're going to leave that intact, though. And maybe, maybe have a change of heart later. Right, I forgot about how good the breach value of this thing is, because we haven't really been using it that way, but it sure did knock that dude out of his attack with just a momentary pulse. Yeah, the damage of this weapon is fine. It is doing fine work. Gotta watch that float down, though. Oh, hey, I just realized I never came back here and did the bell thing for that special, that cool shield that it unlocks. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Uh, in case I didn't... In case I didn't describe it before, I believe what the shield does is it just pulses a huge... It, it does a huge amount of damage in a big area around you. Um, like, think think the, um, the area that the blood shield pulses the bleed in. It's about that size. But it's just a, just a single hit of damage rather than... Hmm. We're not hitting him. I think he's too far away. The projectile's not making it back to him. There you go. That's the sound you want to hear. Oof, I tried to roll that. Oh, wow, bad roll. That's like some all-time bad rolls right there. Alright, you know what? Fine, I'll take you more seriously. That's fair. I had forgotten that those guys were that dangerous. Okay, so... Ten items in here are just tens. Well, that's disappointing as hell. Out of curiosity, we can, in fact, get a new carbine, and the damage comparison is, wow. It's worse. The one we have now is worse than this one. Um, I think, because of the fact that we managed to get our health back up above 20%, the right thing to do here is to just not put ourselves in danger anymore until... Is that? Hmm. Okay. I'm going to take this moment to just uh, analyze this thing on my hand. Okay. I looked down because I was like, you know what? Maybe we're just going to uh, take a second here while we wait for disengagement. And I realized that my hand uh, was... I thought it was blood. I thought there was a bunch of blood on my hand. I think upon further analysis, it is chocolate. When did I last eat a chocolate thing? Where did... How did I get chocolate on my hand? Where, where did this come from? This is almost more concerning than if it was blood. Why do I, Why is there chocolate on my... I mean, it's... Okay. <clears throat> anyway. We can look around a little bit. We just gotta be... Maybe I shouldn't be... Maybe I shouldn't even be doing things that could cause damage to us. But it looks like this guy's alone on this platform. Oh, that's right, though. Hold on. There are invisible enemies in this biome. You know what? We're just gonna sit right here until that little man... Uh, is no longer grayed out in the corner there. And then next time we get hit, we'll um, potentially drink, or or if we get back above 20% after the hit, uh, we'll probably wait for disengagement again. This is part of the magic, man. It lets us delay flasking until we really need to remove the malaise. Okay. In most circumstances, except every once in a while when for some reason it doesn't work, which is a thing that we have seen. This is going to be kind of an awkward area. We're definitely going to want to turret this. All right, I think what we do is we wait for Shield Knight to be facing away from us and for the two of them to be close together, and then we, um, we get up here and stun them, do this thing, give them that. Aha! I see you. I can see you. 
dude. Aha! Got him. Got him to backdash into it. Obviously the plan. Definitely the thing I was hoping for the entire time. Okay, Cursed Carrot. Just a... Uh, just a vial of cells just kind of sitting there. Pretty normal. Pretty normal thing to be the case. I would, I would like to object to that. I fell like a stone. Man, that is not the amount of speed you usually have. Look at that. Look at the arc when we rolled off that platform. And it didn't even trigger my disengagement, which is, again, just kind of like not the way the video game works. So that's... We got... We got beat there by the laws of physics not functioning the way they normally do in two different ways simultaneously. Really harsh stuff. And again, no, no purple. No purple on amulets ever. Those are the rules. Well... <sighs> Gotta tell you. Not real happy about that one. I shouldn't eat I shouldn't eat that. I just took it for I'm in my head about how upset I am, but I should not have eaten a carrot when we had zero malays. Hey, that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's the place we'd have to go if we got the key from the bell. And again, I mean, we'll hit the bells as we go past them, and maybe we'll get lucky. Oh, right. <clears throat> Howdy. Again, turns out the, uh, the tools we have are up to the task. I knew it. I, I knew I saw... Oh, I don't like that at all. I knew I saw the little, like, the, the predator invisibility, but, like, why didn't he attack us when we were up there? Very strange. Very strange stuff. This whole run has been real weird. I don't like it. Also, I gotta say, I'm not necessarily a big fan of um, of the timing on that spike hit from a combo interruption standpoint. I guess it wasn't that long after we took that other hit. The other hit was really what got us. Oh boy, I did not did not clock that guy's presence. That one caught me off guard. Also, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little... Mm, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit distracted and thinking about the chocolate on my hand. <laughs> like, <laughs> Okay. In a long-term development sense, we need to take that. But in another very real sense, um, this run might be... It might be more important to make sure that we get to the timekeeper to see if the timekeeper has any dialogue than it is to um, to like be able to beat the final boss. So I think I am in fact not going to take the curse chest. We'll just be a little bit weaker, but I don't want to risk the death because I think there's some there's something else at stake here. Also, I assume, you know, you get you get enough experience with this place, you stop taking bad damage from the traps. Because <laughs> you get used to them and you remember that they might be there. On the whole, not a great performance so far. I mean, it was, it was a pretty solid performance until we got here. 
Okay, these, these side areas always talk about how time is weird, don't they? Isn't this where the time is weird would be? The bodies immersed in the latest solution are changing less quickly. I must extract the essence of this solution and apply it to the other volunteers. So, you know, I guess I... I don't think I realized that this was, in general, a time loop story. Because there's so many dead bodies. I, I assumed that all of the runs were happening, you know... Were happening in the same timeline. Because there's such a huge pile of dead bodies, I just was like, oh, well, we got all these bodies. It's fine, we just got all these bodies, you know, the way people usually do. Um... But the timekeeper's saying, I gotta reset the loop again, I mean, makes it quite explicit, I think. There's not really any two ways about that. Okay, I see you. I see you over there. I was trying to time it such that the big guy was behind the invisible guy, because I wanted the, wanted the crits on him instead. Oh, hey. We did not accidentally get them in the right order. Alright, uh, there is a scroll. I mean, we should definitely go back and get that, at least. And do we want to swap over to that other weapon? I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to bother. Mm, okay, everything's fine. I'm not used to just looking out for big swinging maces all over the place. In places where it doesn't make any sense for them to be. Because we don't usually... We aren't usually in places where that kind of thing can even happen. Uh... Oh, uh, there's not a reason to go up here, is there? Oh, actually, we don't even have Explorer's Room. Okay, well then I guess we'd better. In case of additional scrolls. I didn't realize there was so much level as yet unleveled. This area is very hostile to, like, maintenance workers. You know, if it's a great big clock tower, I'm just saying, like, somebody's got to get up here and, like, do stuff. There are clock custodians. There's probably a good name for that. I don't know what it... don't know what it is. You know, like, a really large-scale horologist. A big... a big, <laughs> a big high-tier horologist. I suppose if we have, like, a fire grenade then it would make sense to go back and change out for the oil distributing poison gun. But we are not being offered any such thing. We are being offered a lot of sources of oil. Ooh, wolf trap oil. That's... Hmm. That might be better than stun oil. Well, but our stun grenade's also returning our ammo when it hits. I, we're probably we're probably on the right thing here. Okay, there's my instinct. So yeah, in fact, there is definitely stuff worth having up here. So there's just a whole lot of... What is what is even the point of being here? There's not a chest or anything? This is just... This is a side room that has nothing in it except enemies? Why would that even exist? It sure does seem like that might be what we're looking at here. <laughs> I thought I saw... I thought I saw a flicker. Okay. <gasps> Purple! Fi finally, a necklace worth looking at! I thought they'd forgotten all about us. Oh, okay. It's one of these. Best case scenario, I suppose the Collector will be really happy about that before he murders us.
Wow, our Tranquility is 50% bonus damage right now. Also, super weird that all of the, um... All of the cell doors were in the same tower. Oh. Oh, interesting. The DPS on this is super high. It has 11 shots. Hmm. Yeah, if you're actually hitting your crits, it's twice as much DPS. And we have a thing to return our arrows. The thing is, it's so hard to stand still and, and be safe against the Timekeeper. I might want a weapon where I can just, like, pulse it every once in a while. I think I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna avoid this. We're just gonna go fight the boss with Tier 5 weapon. Whatever, it's fine. Five? Seven? Five. And also a tier five Tesla coil and, you know. You know, why do, who needs gear? Who needs items and stuff? Who has ever cared about the efficacy of their inventory? Clearly I've just decided I am done with that enemy type. Well, absolutely not. For so many different reasons. Although, I guess I should... I should say, plus 100% damage on a uh, on a giant whistle. Totally relevant. Actually kind of interesting. I'm debating going back for that carrot. Nah. Again, my concern with the timekeeper is mostly that I will get hit a lot of times. Which means we want to be optimizing for surviving the malaise. Yep, we're just leaving. We're just going. If anything valuable is going to happen here, I'm sure it's going to happen before the fight. Ah, I guess that might not be true. Maybe maybe we would have to defeat the Timekeeper in order to see any valuable dialogue. Don't think we want to change anything. Uh, we're going to be relying on our shield a lot here. Shield's going to be really important. All right. Give me meaningful dialogue. Right? Yes? No? Okay, well. Solid parries, he says before failing to parry. Okay, phase two already. That's good. Haven't, uh,. Haven't disengaged, haven't needed to drink. This is not going as badly as I thought it was going to. Ah, boy. All of a sudden, the damage. Ah, that takes a really long time. Okay. This won't end well. And then you teleport out. It's the same. It's the same. <coughs> Okay, well... Shit, then. What do we do? I guess we just go further? Maybe there'll be something different at the Hand of the King? Uh, oil whip. Weird weapon. No thanks. This, though, is interesting. I do like an explosive decoy. Maybe we finally dropped the Tesla coil. Honestly, the Tesla coil was responsible for about 50 to 70% of our damage. I, I think we just keep rolling like this. And then we go do the distillery? I, I guess, right? We got two flask charges left. Lads, anything? Any words? Anybody? No? Okay. We did it! We got a new blueprint! Um... Yeah, don't think I changed anything. Alright, let's go do the distillery. First time we get hit, we got a drink. And then, um... We do not have the resources that I would like for engaging with the Hand of the King. But to be perfectly honest with you, we may be able to just ride this Tesla coil all the way through the entire thing.
we are going to have to be very careful here. It's like really, really important that we don't spend any resources we don't absolutely have to. He says before doing exactly the... God damn it. Okay, well... It's spawning two barrels on the opposite sides of that thing simultaneously, and uh, that sucks. Okay, well, now at least for next time, we know that we may as well just take the path that we're used to. There's no sense in fighting the Timekeeper, because apparently... How is it the case that fighting the Timekeeper doesn't give you any information when the Timekeeper kicks you into a time... Hmm. That's so obviously the way that that should go that I'm actually... Hi. How you doing? Does anybody else have any clues for me? You. Tell me what's up. Nothing. Nothing. No no text for you. Time seems to be working more or less normally here. <laughs> okay. Well. I think what I'm going to do is... We'll go ahead and unlock the blueprint. I'll, I'll go ahead and off camera. Unlock the blueprint that we got from beating the collector. And then we'll just... Boy, is it going to make me actually... Is it actually going to make me go and kill the collector a second time? Is that how we're going to have to progress this? Gosh, I hope. I hope it... I hope we get to the hand of the king and it tells us something. Something about what is supposed to be going on. I was really expecting to get any information at all here. All right, well, that's going to be it for us for today. When you come back next time tomorrow, it's still, it's still after we beat the game, and we're going to beat the game some more. And we'll see you then.